This is breaking news. Conference. We have, you know, family members like who are at that age. It can be our younger brothers and sister. It can be, you know, cousin. All of us, you know, when we reach this age, we look back to who we were at 15 and 16, and we don't know that there's a period of time that we don't think that we're going to die. And, and the first thing is that we want to say is our prayer, you know, to the family members who love to support, who love the loved one. You know, on behalf of Mayor Adams, we are here standing, you know, with my board commissioner, a great leader that I have here in Staging Island, again, to say a few words on this and letting, you know, New Yorkers know that, you know, we've been working with plan for this area for months. And, and, and the last time when uh, our borough commissioner went to in front of Community Board was weeks before, in June. And, and we will continue working toward the plan. And we will see plan moving forward to this area. And, you know, we extend our deepest uh, condolences to the family and, and loved ones of those who lost their lives. I have a 15 years old, as I have another nine, nine years old, and I have one and 13 brothers and sisters in my family. So I have a lot of nieces and nephews, and I have a lot of, you know, a, a family one who I see at that age of 15 and 16. So, you know, fortunately we lost love, life, and this is something that is happening every day in our city. This is a epidemic that is even all so hard, especially the part related to a speeding in our street. The class investigation by, our, by our NYPD and DOT remains ongoing, but from the initial details, this appears to have been caused by a speeding vehicle with four teenagers, all 16 and under, including the car driver. This was a truly gruesome scene when Mayor Adam visited here last night. And it should be a stark reminder that speeding and reckless driving have life-threatening implications for all New Yorkers. As our public awareness campaign says, speeding ruins life. And drivers, please slow down. As you all know, we have seen that lately is far too much reckless driving. Even today, as we're speaking in front of you, when I look at the numbers of pedestrians and cyclists losing their life in New York City, we are in the lowest number ever since we started comparing our data since 2014. Driver, dead, cyclists and pedestrians and numbers is all lowest than any other year. What increased that numbers is unfortunately motorists who unfortunately lose their life at those three teenagers here last night. While I would not speak too much of the details of a crash that is still under NYPD and DOT investigation, I understand that last night strategy was worsening by the fact that some of the cars occupants were also not wearing their seat belts. That's the law that is not possible. This is something that we encourage Were the seat belts. But we are not eh, just here to look at this crash site or just talk about this one crash. As I said before, our agency and our entire city government is working 24-7 to prevent tragic crashes like this to happen in our street. We are working closely with the local community on a Highland Boulevard Street Improvement Project, which covered the area of South, South Shore of Staten Island. Our Borough Commissioner, and you will hear from her, Rosane Carana, who joined us, has been our leader on advocating for this project. Rosane knows only too well that Highland has been far too dangerous for far too long. Rosane herself lost her maternal grandparents 
to a tragic crash on Highland in the 1950s before she was even born. And I know that when we speak about, you know, reckless drivers, when we speak about crashes in the city, as one of the members of my cabinet meeting team at DOT, she always also connect to that reality, that experience that her family lived decades ago. The great project Roseanne has already publicly presented this spring and that DOT first presented to the community and its elected official in 2009 involves the additional of bike lanes and road diet that will help organize traffic more efficiently, calm traffic and improve the safety of Highland. Last night's crash only shows how critical traffic calming projects like this are. The statistics for Highland are just shocking. On the southern 1.2 mile section between Pace and suddenly that it killed or seriously injured rate is 7.5 people per mile, which is a nine times higher than the rate of all of Staten Island and 2.5 times higher than the rate of all New York City. It has one of the highest crash rates of any street in all five boroughs. And so I'm proud to announce today that this project that have been discussed for weeks, for months, presented by our borough commissioner here in Staten Island, will move forward in the next couple of weeks. But safety is not only about design changes. I will also know that this crash happened on a Sunday evening when the more than dozen speed cameras we have placed along Highland were turned off, as required by the state law. However, thanks to the leadership of Mayor Aaron, the support of uh, Governor Hocko, and the leadership of the state in the city, this will change. Starting on August 1st, anybody speeding that is going in this particular area, 41 miles per hour, since the speed limit here is 30 miles per hour, or faster along Highland, will get a ticket, which will help make sure our streets are as safe as possible. And the same thing will happen across the five borough where the speed limit is 25. There's not going to be more change to those drivers who are speeding from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. when the camera were off. On August 1st, all speed cameras will be working 24 hours. Through engineer and enforcement, we will make a safer Staten Island, a safer New York City. And we will continue to educate New Yorkers about the dangers of a speeding and urging them to buckle up. Leave life depend on it. So we're trying to say a few words and then we'll take a few questions. Thank you. And um, as Commissioner Rodriguez said, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families and to the victims. This was a horrific crash last night, and I have been working with the community to enhance safety for all road users. That includes motorists, pedestrians, and cyclists, and I will continue to do so. Um, since I've been borough commissioner for the past uh, year and a half, we have worked with all the communities on Staten Island, and we are planning uh, several of these street improvement projects in each of the communities along Staten Island from the North Shore to the South Shore. And I thank Commissioner Rodriguez for his support and for Mayor Adams' support. And I look forward to working with the community to make uh, this area and all areas of Staten Island safe. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Can you please describe what that project would look like? How it would work? Sure. So what we're going to be doing it for, um, from Page to Saturday will be uh, installing a bike lane. Um, we're not uh, impacting parking, but we're going to be uh, removing a travel lane and adding left turn bays so that um, folks that are making the left turns, I mean, m many of you that may be familiar with Highland Boulevard, how many times have you been behind uh, a car is trying to make a left turn and you have nowhere to go? And, the, and traffic goes down to one travel lane. So in this stretch, we're going to be adding travel lane, uh, left turn lanes so people can uh, make that true sa tr uh, safe and uh, easy transition uh, down to one of the side streets when making a left turn. So it'll be bike lanes, it'll be removing a travel lane, but installing a left turn uh, bay and in each many, of the And How many miles uh, will you be doing that on? It'll be from from Page to Satterley. So I'm not exactly sure what the mileage is, uh, probably about maybe two miles, maybe about. In the Tottenville area? 
right? Yes, right. correct, yeah. What about the fighter? Are you going to start Look, anything in the future? No, we're going to be, again, like, there's a plan that we have. We know you guys have been, in, like, noticing how DOT is using all the tools, you know, for pedestrian island to expanding space for, you know, a cyclists also to have protect their bike lane, bus lane. So the plan has been presented, but especially now we're going to be, you know, continue this conversation with members of this community. We also know that sometimes we have to deal with opposition from politicians. And as someone that used to be a council member, I want to encourage all elected officials to understand that sometimes we need to make decisions that sometimes are not popular, but those decisions save life. And this is, again, a unfortunately moment where we are that we lost three individuals. They could be the next commissioner. They could be the next mayor. They could be the, 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 the doctor. They could be the one, you know, covering a story. So for me, again, uh, having a 15 years old is something personal, you know, when I look to see how we are losing that generation. And, and this is not the, we cannot say that this is the last one. You know, you cover the one when the driver's also lost control and a car jump into the, the rail yard, the, 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 the Antra rail yard uh, uh, under the George Washington Bridge. Two individuals in the late daddy lost their life. You also cover the all this story about the driver who was speed, speeding through the FDR around 963. You know, another two young lady lost their life too. So this is, you know, we're going to be looking to not only what we have presented, but any other thing that we need to do to be sure that, you know, drivers slow down. Y en español, eh, lo voy a decir también, so I'm going to see in one minute also in Spanish. Estamos aquí eh, en, 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 en representación del alcalde de Regardens, como comisionado del departamento de transportación. Uno, mandando nuestras oraciones a la familia que perdieron sus tres eh, teenagers queridos. Situaciones que difícil que la vivimos a diario en la ciudad de Nueva York, una ciudad donde en esta área ya el departamento de transportación que nosotros dirigimos había presentado un plan eh, en el mes de junio, vamos a seguir con el plan, en la próxima semana nosotros vamos a estar siguiendo rediseñando esta avenida, es una avenida peligrosa donde nosotros vamos a hacer todo lo necesario para que los choferes entonces tengan que reducir la velocidad cuando manejan esta localidad. ¿Tenemos? No, es claro de que además de, de lo que parece indicar de que el joven que iba manejando iba a alta velocidad, también puede ser que contribuyó el factor que no tenían los cinturones puestos. Eh, nosotros le queremos recordar a todos los neoyorquinos que toda la persona que tenga un vehículo, la ley del estado de Nueva York, manda a que la persona tenga un cinturón. Pero también recordar de que nosotros, eh, eh, esta situación fue producto de que en la hora, un domingo en la noche, cuando este chofer estaba manejando a alta velocidad, las cámaras estaban apagadas. Porque el estado de Nueva York solamente hasta este momento ha permitido que las cámaras funcionen de 6 de la mañana a 10 de la noche. Eso va a cambiar en agosto primero, cuando ya la ley nos da la autorización a Nueva York para que las cámaras estén manejando las 24 horas. Choferes deben saber manejar a la velocidad que la ley establece, es la forma en la que ellos van a estar seguros y van a proteger a los peatones y a los ciclistas. ¿Tiene otra pregunta? I cannot get into NYPD is still on investigation in the park. Okay, and it was kind of with the traffic. You said the traffic cameras were not on. Well, it cannot be on because the law, the speed camera only work from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. by the state law. Thanks to the leadership of Mayor Adams and the support that we got from Governor Hoko, that passed and the leadership at, at the state level in the Assembly too, uh, we were able to change the law and started in August 1st. The camera will be working 24 hours. Were there cows near? Speed cameras here? I don't know about, the, we don't see one here in this location because also, I don't know again, as you know, the, we limit it on where to install the camera. The camera must be only a quarter mile from school. And I will be, with the support of Mayor Aaron, continue going to Albany to be sure that as on August 1st, the camera will be working 24 hours. I would like to see next year, and Mayor Aaron too, 
to also uh, get the summit law passed that will allow New York City to control the speed, the speed limit in the city, hopefully to, my, to five miles per hour when drivers turn, as also we would like to get see a restriction of where the camera are installed. And instead of, instead of only being able to have the camera a quarter mile from school, we would like for the city to decide to have the, the right to install the speed camera where the data is showing that crashes are happening. Uh, I have a 15 years old, and the message is clear. Like, you know, we had to, I, I, I would not blame you as a teenager because a long time ago I used to be a teenager. And I look back and all of us in my age or closer to me know that you look back to that age and you know that sometimes you don't think that you're never going to die. You think that, you know, you can do a lot of things. I know that most of us have done things that we go back and say, I will never do it. So, but I feel that, yes, you know, we have to continue having conversation. We are teenagers. That's a whole process. You know, it, we all have to go back and forth in that conversation. I, 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 I advise is that, you know, we have to continue having conversation with our teenagers to be sure that they get into the car, they drive in the speed limit. But at this moment, I want you to focus more, sending my prayer to the family, and we as a city to focus on our responsibility, which is, you know, to be sure that the plan that we presented here in Staten Island move forward. And I hope also that any politician that have been against this plan understand why we have to move forward with this plan. Estoy diciendo que la, la, el mensaje de nosotros es, uno, que nuestra oración es para la familia que perdió a nuestro niño querido. Como persona adulta que somos ahora, miramos para atrás y todos nosotros hicimos cosas cuando teenagers que no creíamos que poníamos la vida en juego. Lo, nosotros no controlamos esa parte, eh, sí sugerimos que los padres hablen con los hijos. Lo que nosotros como ciudad controlamos son los mecanismos para reducir la velocidad. Hemos dictado, estado presentando un plan en este lugar. Le pedimos a que cualquier político que haya estado en contra, no solamente en vecindarios, sino en cualquier lugar de la ciudad de Nueva York, que DOT ha buscado plan para rediseñar las calles, para reducir la velocidad. Entiendan que este escenario nos recuerda a nosotros, de que tenemos que seguir haciendo la, 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 la reingeniería diferente, que tenemos que seguir poniendo la, el límite de velocidad, porque es la forma en como los choferes están seguros, también protegemos a las demás personas. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.